So look, a lot of you were upset that I didn't talk to David or call Boston before we played them earlier on this season. I was still upset after the playoff final, but today we're going to give David a call. So uh, let me just put his number in. But the number's not record. D David, where are you? David? He's left. Today. He's been, he's been replaced today. David! They can't just get rid of David like that. What do I do? Do I call now? What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 13 of Park to Prem here with Lincoln City. Today we are taking on Boston for what could end up being the last time realistically as we look very much destined for promotion. Meanwhile Boston United, a little bit mediocre, prob probably an understatement, they sit down in 16th. As I mentioned in the intro they have had a takeover which is kind of interesting. David has gone, he's left the building and James Green has come in. It's only a consortium takeover so it's nothing too club changing. But well that is not the only takeover going on because meanwhile over you know, on the other side of Lincolnshire, really, we're also going through a takeover. You can see here uh, we are under transfer embargo. We are kind of twiddling our thumbs and waiting. And of course, in today's episode, we've got the match against Boston. And we're also going to cover the youth intake, which is yet to happen yet. So my plan is play the Boston game, go forward, have a look at the new youth candidates as they come through. Although apparently I shouldn't expect too much from this intake it's not looking very good let's be honest here but what should be interesting is to hopefully provide you with an update on the takeover either that or we're just gonna have a massive cliffhanger uh, waiting to go into tomorrow's episode which of course is going to be the end of season episode i say this all now because well there is only eight games left of the season after today's game and we are very very comfortably at the top of the table a win here and we'd go 20 points clear of a fourth place which would be massive and uh well with only 24 points available uh, I would start to plan, I suppose, around League One football, although I'd be lying if I was to say I've not already been planning around what League One football might look like for the club. Anyway, if we have a look at the results since you were last here, we've looked very, very good defensively, and I think we do have one man to thank for that. Ben Cabango, he's come into the team. A lot of you were very impressed with the signing of him um, just in yesterday's episode. In the comments, a lot of people surprised he'd taken the step down. I'm surprised too. Obviously, he looks like a League One or a very least championship quality player. I mean, you can see here, apparently a good player for League One sides. I think he could play in the championship realistically. Um, yeah, he's been absolutely superb for us. Two goals, one assist, a 7.35 average rating as well. And you look at the defensive record since he's joined us after a very torrid January. I mean, I have to assume that he's been the little difference maker for us. So anyway, let's have a look at the game since we last here. Of course, last time out we took on Salford. A number of one nils in here as well. Much like that Salford game, the first of which was against Barrow. And it was Paul Glatzel with the goal. He's done something, everyone. Get the camera out, take a picture. Uh, it might last longer than his Lincoln City career, because I'm going to be honest, as much as he's got insane potential, apparently, and he has scored an important goal in this game, he is certainly one of those players who, if a good offer came in for him, I probably wouldn't have to weigh it up too much. But no, he got the winner there against Barrow and against Southend. Well, Green did okay for us in what ended up being a bit of a disappointing result. The only time since the start of February where we have dropped points. This 1-1 draw started out with a Callum Green free kick, if I'm not mistaken. They replied not long after through Claudio Weeks. It was a tight game. I felt like maybe we were the better team, but we have to share the spoils, unfortunately. In the very next game, though, against Mansfield, a good 1-0 win in this one. Aidan Fitzpatrick with the goal. He's actually been on a little goal-scoring run as of late in his last five games. Two goals, two assists. He's looking very, very good out on the left-hand side for us, cutting in on his right foot. You can see here, a good player for most League One teams. And that kind of extends across a lot of the squad, which just, I don't know, it makes me very excited for what next season could bring for us, because I think we can do really well in League One, to be honest. Anyway, the latter two games that we had to start the month of March were two 3-1 wins, the first of which was against Doncaster, the old enemy, so to say, a team whom have caused us issues. Of course, we played them in the playoff semi-finals last year, and in this game here, we took the lead early via Callum Green, and then, well, they scored before half-time, and it remained 1-1 for a very, very long time, but... 
As the dying embers of the game came to fruition, so did the goals. Ben Cottrell with the first in the 86th minute. And that felt like it was going to be the match winger. Uh, and then, well, not long after that, Kamango popped up with a goal. His second at the club in the 93rd minute made sure of the result, made it look a little more comfortable than it was. A really good performance, though. And uh, the attendances this season have been really good. We had almost 10,000 fans in attendance for this game, which is massive, massive stuff. And while we did exceed that total against one of our local rivals in Scunthorpe. And, uh, well, in this one, we beat them 3-1. A good result here. Um, we took the lead in this game via Fitzpatrick just before halftime. Hughes then with the pick of the bunch, the right back, scoring what might go down as the goal of the season, dare I say, come the end of the year. A really ferocious effort from him. They did peg us back, but before the end of the game, Ellis Sims returned to goal-scoring ways. He had been five games prior to this match without a goal. Good to see him back in the action. He had had a little bit of a knock. And in the end, that 3-1 win against Scunthorpe puts us in this already commanding position where we are top of the table, we're cruising along, and as I said, today's game against Boston United could well be the last time we play the, our former club because, well, they're currently languishing in mid-table. I've got to say, not sure the five at the back that Johnny Housen is playing is the correct move. I, I kind of hope they sack him and find someone who wants to play a little more attacking. Sorry, Johnny, nothing personal. But anyway, let's get into today's game, because as I said, we have got the second half of today's episode, which I'm going to be honest, will probably end up being a shorter half, um, but kind of looking at the youth intake, which I'm, we're going to remain optimistic it could be good. Our youth intake has been improved over this season, so it's now, I think, an excellent level. So you'd hope it would result in better players coming through. But despite those upgrades, expectations, the bar, it's low. Anyway, looking at the team for today's game, it's a full-strength squad, Cabango and Quanza with a lovely, sexy green line between them. Things you love to see. Elsewhere in the team, Lopez and Hughes at left-back and right-back, of course. Coming in goal looks very, very good. He is currently contracted for one further season after this year, but of course, if we get promoted, that will be extended by a further two seasons. Much like a lot of the players in this team, he is listed as a good player for League One sides. And in fact, I've not done this nearly enough. If we just take a peek at the League Two season preview and the team of the league, you can see here a whole host of our players in it. In fact, of the Media Dream 11, five of the players... Play for us, which feels pretty good if you'll ask me, albeit one is Anthony. I'm calling him Anthony or Ant. I, I will say thank you to the people who tried to explain how to say his name, but there were like two or three different ways of saying it. And Ant, Ant's just a nice affectionate name. And he's kind of like, I was going to say he's kind of like an Ant. He's not actually that small. He's been good for us, much like a lot of my loans. If you've watched the channel for a while, I don't like to start loanees in loads of games. And that's one of the reasons why this year Sims has played so much more over Thomas in the striking department is because when a player's contracted to you, you kind of have to, I feel like, allow them to take priority, particularly if they're a young player that needs match time. I've got to look after the club's own interests. And uh, obviously, Sims this year, 21 goals. He's looked very, very good. I say all of this. Josh Thomas, is your contract still expiring at the end of the year? It's not. Um, yeah, I was hoping we might be able to snap him up on a free, but it feels unlikely. And, uh, well, given his contributions this year, where he's done pretty well, but maybe been in the shadow of Ellis Sims, maybe got a decision to make as to whether or not to extend his loan. Anyway, I've got distracted here. The midfield five, and in fact, the striker, is the setup that you've come to know and love. Good to see Green get in and amongst the goals as of late. He had been a little bit disappointing, perhaps, in that regard. He's also not improved a great deal. I've talked about it before, but I do fear that Callum Green is one of those players who's kind of really good at 18, but he's already at his potential. You know, it happens. Players hit that peak, that ceiling, sooner than others. Players develop at different rates. Green looks absolutely top quality. Obviously, he's nailed on as our centre attack in mid, but will he be able to have the longevity? I think there's still a little question mark over that. But anyway, let's submit the team for today's game. Let's get into this. The penultimate episode of the season. We're doing well in League 2, but with a youth intake and a takeover on the horizon, as well as this final game against Boston, um, there's still plenty of stuff to get done. Uh, plenty of business to settle, I suppose. I will hope for one last emphatic win before hopefully we, we ride off into the sunset and leave Boston United behind. I say all of this like Boston can't possibly catch us up. They've got a load of money still to spend, everyone. They could still do a lot of business and certainly, you know, rocket up the leagues. Will they ever be able to catch me up? I suppose that's the that's the challenge for Johnny Housen to do. But based off what we've seen this year, I'm going to say no. Looking at their team, the fact they've got Mamma Mia playing alongside Junior just feels weird because Mamma Mia 
when we were in the National League, was only a reserve player for us. But apparently, Johnny Alsom rates him. Anyway, Big Ball Ford, Whaley to Tompkins. Plenty of players in amber that I don't recognise. It's like the team's moved on after 18 months. I say 18 months. It's been a season and a half just about since my departure now. Nearer 15 months if you want to be pedantic. Um, you know, the team is starting to take shape as we have a chance and Sims heads just over. Good opportunity early on. Would like a nice early goal. Just look at the rest of their team here. And I don't know why it's all cut off at the bottom. I think that's down to their formation. We'll blame them. They've got Bennett in the team. They've got Cassidy in. They've got Sago Mamamiya Jr. But lots of names I don't recognise. Lots of names I don't... I'm trying to find, find a good analogy here. But I can't I can't really come up with one. It's not, it's not the team I left behind. Lynch gets it away. Nice clearance by him. But, well, a good chance for us. That unfortunately, we couldn't quite convert. I say all of this, obviously, the big incentive today is win this game for own personal pride and for kind of club pride, because it'd be nice to dispatch, I suppose, of our local rivals. But I have got to kind of remind myself, the, the league's not done yet, but the league is looking very, very comfortable. There's not as much pressure on us to perform. That's not exactly an excuse for us to get complacent here, though. And in fact, as you've seen in the recent results, we've grinded out some really good results. We haven't looked like taking our foot off the gas. Anyway, Sims bringing it forward here. What can he do? He hits it just wide of the post. An ambitious effort on his left foot, but, well, it very nearly paid off. It's been an opening half an hour that has seen Boston United do absolutely nothing. Of course, last time we met them, it only finished 1-0. I'm hoping for more goals today. I'm, I was hoping that they would try and play on the front foot, albeit away from home. But so far, it's all us as we're in the driving seat. Carter, Fitzpatrick, Lopez on the overlap. Tries to get it in, tries again to get it in. Sims is there, and finally, the third chance that's fallen his way. He finds the target. The keeper has no chance. Goal number 22 for the year for Ellis Sims, and he's looking very good. A player whom I'm very optimistic I can rely on going into next year. And I think that extends to a lot of the team, actually. I feel like the step between the National League, League 2 and League 1 isn't that big. And I think if you rock it up the leagues quickly, League 1 can become this league that is a bit of a step up. Especially with teams coming down from the Championship. But given the fact that we obviously, we ballsed up the playoffs last year. Let's hold up our hands and admit it. We ballsed it up. It has meant that we've had this extra year to really add some strength. And also get players playing within a system. And uh, I'm hoping that's going to make that transition to League One a little bit simpler for us. Whether or not that is going to be the case, I suppose, remains to be seen. Anyway, 15, 55, I was about to say 15 minutes gone. I guess it's 15 minutes gone of the second half. 55 minutes gone, an hour gone. It's time to make some chances. Uh, chances, Make some changes. Ben Cottrell, you've been quiet. Am I about to bring on Paul Glatzel? You're absolutely right, I am. And also, I have noticed that people in the comments, they've been sending out a search party looking for Mark Cooper. You know, remember him, Northern Irish striker? Now, he is still playing with the under-23s and getting some regular, friendly football with them. But because of the form of Sims, I've not really looked at dropping him. And even Glatzel's got some goals, and it's kind of just meant that, unfortunately, a casualty of this year has been Mark Cooper although he is developing very well and I do feel like I need to give him some more opportunities maybe even in the place of Thomas on the bench you know for the remainder of the season because there are some big clubs interested in Marky Cooper I'm imagining some of you guys kind of setting up missing posters you know like a lost pet for Mark Cooper he's around we found him don't worry also the linesman's found his flag there. Thank you, mate. If they'd scored then, I would have been a bit annoyed. I feel like this game is destined to finish how the last one finished against Boston United. It's 1-0. Johnny Alton's men have done absolutely nothing. You are a disgrace to Boston United Football Club. But that win was for David. For David. Can we have a for David? Little, I'm, I'm like punching the air. For David in memory. Gone but never forgotten. That's what you get for getting rid of David. Good result, though. A good win. Unfortunately, and you might have spied it before the game, that win there does not mathematically secure us automatic promotion just yet. Although, it's, it, it's, it's done, everyone. I'm going to say it. It's done. Um, but we should have it done in the next couple of games, to say the very least. And you can see the gap to Scunthorpe is also rather large. Um, the reality is that this season is going to be one of those ones where there's no end-of-season drama 
and kind of, I don't know, madness going on, it should be a relatively straightforward game against Cambridge on the last day of the season. But of course, tomorrow's episode will be fun in terms of looking forward, I suppose, to League One and beyond. But anyway, that is not today's episode done just yet. I am going to go and find out when the youth intake's happening, and I will join you guys to review this year's crop and hopefully provide you with a little update on what's going on regarding the takeover. So uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, everyone, we're back. I've been partying. It's been New Year's Eve, so my voice is a little bit shot. Of course, if you're like me in the UK, you've had a wild night in. Um, let's, shall we talk about the youth intake? No, let's not, because there's not that much to talk about. Instead, before we talk about the takeover and have a look at the youth intake, let's have a look at the couple games since you were last here, um, just because they might last longer than the actual review of the youth intake. Make of that what you will. Uh, the first game we had was against Bradford. As you can see down here, we lost it 3-1, and in fact, in this game, it could have looked a little bit more embarrassing. They were 3-0 up in this game until the very last minute. Um, we were tired. Of course, we did play kind of boss and midweek it was the only fixture at the time as it was part of our catch-up and uh, well we definitely looked leggy and tired as we took on Bradford uh, lost this one 3-1 even our goal itself just wasn't even an impressive one it was a scrappy scramble to get the ball over the line and while following on from that we took on MK Dons which finished 2-2 2. yes you're not you're not misreading that it finished 2-2 we took the lead through Fitzpatrick a tidy finish for him, to be fair. He is quickly emerging as the player with the most, kind of, uh, I guess, man of the matches, I think, in the league. He's done insane stuff, Fitzpatrick. That was not going to be his only contribution in this game. We then went on to get a, well, uh, not the best of defensive records. They scored two goals against us in the second half. We were struggling away. It was not particularly pretty, but, and it's a big but, we found him, everyone. He'd been missing. I went out on search for him. And guess who else found him? Fitzpatrick at the back post. Mark Cooper, second ever goal for Lincoln City. And well, speaking of the devil, here he is. Here's how he is looking. He looks absolutely superb, the 19-year-old. Now, the issue for Mark Cooper is he's got great finishing and he's got some good mentals and some okay physicals. But he is just glaringly missing some really obvious areas that you'd want to see improved. You could argue that he'd be a really good pressing forward. But the issue with that is, is he doesn't really have the work rate or the stamina for it. But he's pretty close otherwise, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I am currently training him as a complete forward. I had been training him as a pressing forward. But he's just not shown the progression and the physicals that I need to see from him. I think we're best off just trying to develop him as much as possible. You can see here in terms of the teams wanting him... There's some pretty high-profile clubs, so I'm still holding out hope that he's, he's going to turn out good for us. Anyway, regarding the kind of takeover and all that jazz, no, nothing's happened. It's still in progress and in process, so we will find out tomorrow what happens with regards to the takeover. And, well, shall we talk about the youth intake? Oh, my word. How, how good was it, Jack? Look, I'm going to be honest. It, it's not completely awful, but it's just really, really average everywhere. Also, we had a few players we picked up from really random teams, like Wadada, who are apparently a Jamaican team, who provided us very kindly with Kamani McBride. Let's have a look at Kamani. Look at him. Look at... I mean, mm, it, it's not it's not the best youth intake I've ever seen. I'm, I'm going to level with you. If we just look at the candidates here, apparently the pick of the bunch is Huang Jiafeng, I think. Uh, that's definitely not how you say it. He, I, I'm going to assume is... Partially Chinese? He is indeed. Look at that. I'm well good when it comes to determining nationalities. He, his favourite club is Lincoln, which you absolutely love to see. Apparently, he's the best player of this year's intake. Let that settle in. Let that. I mean, if we just look at our facilities here, we have invested in them. We have upgraded the youth facilities. Excellent uh, youth recruitment. I guess the academy coaching and maybe the youth level still, you know, a couple of things left to pu push on for. But this is kind of a really good example of where, you know, it doesn't matter how good your facilities are. Some years you are just going to have really bad youth intakes. Obviously, it's something that I've put a lot of effort into with board requests is improving the youth side of things we've invested a lot of money in it you can see we've got 1.6 million in the bank i would love to make further youth requests 
I can't because we're in the middle of a takeover, so you just can't do any of that stuff. In terms of some of the other players, just to look at them here, we've got Luke Cartwright, who is a 16-year-old uh, centre-back. Left-footed, which is kind of nice. I'd actually argue that he's one of the better players in this youth intake, but it's not saying a great deal. He just kind of, he's got the attributes to play the positions that he allegedly plays. Sometimes you get players who generate and you look at them and go, you are too small to be a centre-back, or, you know, you're just not strong enough to be a centre-back. You don't have the, the, the passing, I suppose, to be a midfielder. I guess Foster as well maybe falls into that kind of category where he could maybe be good if he just improves a little bit everywhere. He's actually not got like a massive glaring weakness, really. I guess you would look at his marking and say that that could be a little better. But um, when you're kind of saying that these kind of players are the pick of the bunch, I mean, I mean let's be honest, it's no Sam York, is it? It's no Sam York. That's the only way of looking at this, frankly. And I know that the bar has been set very, very high by him. Anyway, I'm getting upset just looking through these players, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, and as you might be able to tell, my voice is a little scratchy because it's first thing in the morning for the first day of the new year. Either way, I realise this video is going up on January 1st, so Happy New Year! If you're binge-watching this in the distant future, please tell me 2022 has been a slightly better year than 2020. Uh, and, uh, well, I think we'll wrap things up there. Thank you for watching. If you got to the end of the video, make sure to drop a like on it. Back again tomorrow to end the season. We're going to be talking all about our plans for the future. The title, whilst not quite secured yet, looks very much like it's on its way. And, uh, well, until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.